Hi there. Today it's day three of the four elements for textured paste series for Seth Aptor Creative Team. I've already used the crackled and flaky textured pastes, but today I'm tackling the bees version. I chose the beads for air because they remind me of little air bubbles and also the paste looks really foamy or really light so that made me think of air of the four elements. I realized that in the four projects I had two primary colors kind of picked up because water needed to be blue and fire was red so I needed a yellow project. The earth is kind of exception of that rule because it's brown and black kind of lack of any color or all the primaries together but so I needed the yellow one and air seemed really appropriate for it it's kind of air sunlight clouds so that's why air is yellow again the project starts by adding some color to the background whereas the two previous ones have been more or less like solid one color. For air, this is totally different. I went for an abstract kind of painting and played with light tones and also with the translucency. So I first just add some painted color blocks here and there using three different colors. And then I make those translucent using um, gel medium and paint another layer on top. The whole idea is to keep the project really light and airy so there's not harsh contrast or any vibrant colors. Whereas earth was matte and fire sparkly and glossy, again air is matte and well you guessed it, water is going to be sparkly and glossy. So I'm using a matte gel medium when I'm mixing the translucent acrylic paint. I also wanted to add a touch of pattern in there so it wouldn't be just, well, not boring, but still kind of no movement with those color blocks. So I chose a stencil by a teammate, Robin McClendon, and added a really subtle script layer between the two acrylic layers. After letting the piece dry, I felt it was painted shut in a way. The color layers were, were too blocking, too heavy, so I wanted to remove something. As you know, acrylic paint is water resistant after drying, so water wasn't an option. But I know that hand sanitizer, so alcohol or rubbing alcohol, which we don't have easily accessible here in Finland, is a good way to make those acrylic layers disappear or make them more grungy. So I added some hand sanitizer on top and rubbed some of the acrylic paint away to reveal the layers underneath so it wouldn't be so dull, so solid on top. As the first try didn't give enough results, I repeated the process a couple of times. And then after drying all of the hand sanitizer away from the project, I added some white, bright white splashes to the piece. Whereas in the two previous videos, I'm always colored the paste before applying it with 
this project I wanted to keep the paste white because, well, it looks like clouds or foam, so that seemed appropriate. I'm also using a stencil to apply the paste to create kind of a little focal point of sorts. So I'm applying quite a heavy load of the paste through the stencil because the beads give the paste a little bit of height. So I can scrape it really thinly because then I remove all the little beads. So it needs to be a little bit thicker. But as you can see, I can then pick up the rest of the paste from the stencil and apply it to my piece. I carry on the pattern to the all of the edges and add a touch of the paste here and there to give it more like a cloudy or, well, airy feel. After finishing applying the textured bead paste, I then again let the project air dry. After letting the project air dry, I felt it needed a touch of color and watercolor somehow seemed airy enough to be added on top. But as I'm working with, well, gel medium and all acrylic products, watercolor wouldn't probably grab nicely on top of such a plastic styled layer. So I need something to give it more ground. There's also watercolor grounds available, but I don't own any of those, so I used gesso. While choosing the gesso, I chose the clear one because I could apply it throughout the whole canvas, making the project again matte, but also at the same time giving it ground for the watercolor to grab on. So it's kind of two birds with one stone. After a quick dry, I then could add the watercolor on top. I added to the background, but also on top of the paste here and there to kind of highlight the texture it has. And the finishing touch again is to add the embellishment signaling air to my project. I used the embossing powders again to color this one, but chose the etched platinum color of the trio. Thank you again for stopping by today. I hope you liked this video and be back tomorrow for the final one. And then it's going to be water and sandy paste. See you then. Bye bye.